Welcome back to AI Mistakes. Perplexity.ai has released an updated version of their tool that includes the ability to upload PDFs and use that in the responses. In many ways, this is a feature match to what we've seen with the likes of ChatGPT and Claude by Anthropic. We're at a point now where this capability is really becoming table stakes. So today we're going to dive in to Perplexity AI. So let's start off with this. Perplexity AI was founded in 2022. So these guys were working at Google AI and they really felt like it was a big opportunity to do more with large language models. They were frustrated with the lack of good tooling to get access to the knowledge that was available. And of course, since they worked at Google, they were thinking about the function of a search engine. And that's really where they took the capability. So Perplexity AI is an AI powered search engine that has chatbot capabilities to take advantage of natural language processing and generative. I would say from a feature compatibility standpoint, there's a lot of very direct comparisons that should be made to ChatGPT and Anthropics Claude and Claude 2. So we'll take you through the use of the document upload feature. There is a free set of options. So if you're not subscribing to a tool and you found the local LLM options to be insufficient for your need, this might be a good choice for you to adopt. There is limited but available access to GPT-4 is significantly improved over 3.5. And anytime I'm not using a GPT-4 based results engine, I, I notice the difference. Their tool is available for free. They do allow you to use a service called Copilot that gives you five opportunities to use the tool every four hours, and that uses OpenAI's GPT-4 model to answer your questions. Notably, they also provide this focus option that allows you to sub-select an area that you'd like to use for the data that backs your query. Now, the other services that I'm using, like ChatGPT, and Claude now all support some form of document upload and questioning. And this feature that Perplexity launched today is in beta. And I've already seen some discussions about some opportunities for improvement, but I did want to cover this because I think it is really solidifying this objective that we have as users, that we want to be able to upload a file and ask questions about that file and get answers with the large language model augmenting our answer, but getting specific information from the documentation. When we did the GPT-4 all video a number of weeks ago, that seemed to be a very common sentiment. So I've been playing with this new beta release feature for a good part of the day. So with the understanding that I've already upgraded to the Temporary subscription, I'm not limited by the number of Copilot queries at this point because I'm on the free trial. But let's type in our question and upload a file and you get a chance to see how it works. So I'm just going to paste in my query because I'm using the same query across multiple systems. Just correct my grammatical errors here. And then I'm going to choose my file. I've got my weights and biases. And it's already uploaded the file, nice and quick there. Okay, it's gonna read the file and now it's gonna ask me some questions. What are the main topics you wanna cover? I would like to cover the basics as presented in the book. So it's providing a good outline. It's using the information and citing it at the top, telling me where it's getting the information. You see here, we've got Webflow, we've got some documentation. 
DeepMind, Wikipedia. So really nice, thorough fill out of using this. And it, it used the weights and biases document as I requested and completed the output. Really good results. I'm pretty happy with this. It does remember your sessions across devices. They had an iPhone app that was available even before ChatGPT released their iPhone app. They have been all over the space, really breaking in and bringing features in some cases well before some of the other providers. So it is appropriate for us to talk about them. I think they are a company that's providing capability that's unique and different from the others. The, the best analog that I can share with you for perplexity today is Bing's chat GPT clone. It uses GPT-4 and augments the queries with Bing search. The great unique thing about perplexity AI today, separate from Bing, is that unfortunately, even though I've got a paid subscription with chat GPT, OpenAI have turned off the browsing add-on feature, so there is no built into the tool capability for using internet search and internet data to augment your answer. And that is a core essential part of the service that Perplexity AI provides. So I took a file that I've been using more recently provided by Weights and Biases back in April of this year that provide some current best practices for training an LLM from scratch. So I thought, let me load that document to begin the discussion. But essentially what I did here is I gave it a query asking it to build a course on the document that Weights and Biases provided. And it got in and it looked at the documentation and provided an answer. Now this answer came back very quickly. So it did an analysis of that data pretty quickly. And I think it encapsulates a lot of the major sections of the document. The good news here is that the document is pretty straightforward to break down. And it, it used that in forming the response. And it's very clear from the, the subheadings that it selected that it is heavily relying on the content in the book. And to provide some sort of a benchmark or compar comparison to the performance that Perplexity is giving, I ran that same query with Claude. Claude uh, has had the ability to upload, upload documents for quite some time. And Claude's notable capability is that it now can work with up to 100,000 tokens. So you can upload a very large book. I would say from a summary and large token basis that Claude is really the winner in this space. So it is a valuable contributor to the discussion. And then of course, I've been using ChatGPT for a while. Now, the workaround that I've been taking advantage of in ChatGPT is actually a Chrome plugin that provides a switch for web access. That's been a very good workaround for me because I, I have all of my work and I tend to use a lot of the capability for ChatGPT for my other occupational needs and recreational needs. So my life is really in chat GPT and I use it most often. I also find that the GPT-4 model inside chat GPT coupled with their capabilities in the code interpreter plugin are really valuable. So that's still my go-to choice. But when you look at the answer that chat GPT came back with, what you see is that as expected, even though the GPT-4 model is available to Perplexity AI, you are getting a different answer in chat GPT than you would get from Perplexity. And then Claude is providing yet a, a totally different interpretation on its own. The Claude answer is actually quite a bit shorter, which I was a little bit surprised at. Historically speaking, what we've seen from Perplexity is that it tends to provide really good answers that are directly sourced. So if you are having to provide information that really is news or factually based, it's pretty valuable because it will directly include those sources. And as I mentioned earlier, when you do the search, you have the ability to choose the focus 
The other notable inclusion that's less relevant today than it was a few months ago is uh, ChatGPT now has the Wolfram Alpha plugin that lets you do the math, but they had this capability, the knowledge engine built in. And, you know, the real advantage here, of course, is that you can use perplexity without a paying subscription. A chat GPT doesn't have the option to use plugins at all on their free subscription model. So if you're not like me paying open AI money for your chat GPT subscription, this might be really worth a look for you because it provides the ability to do the document interrogation, to do the more narrow searching, uh, specifically around the area of information that you want. And it provides some plug-in-like capabilities that you really can't get with ChatGPT. I do want to call out, though, that the document search is in beta, so they're still evolving that tool. But, you know, given the people that are working on this tool, even though it's not the very popular today, I definitely think that this one bears calling out. The other interesting thing that's happened is that they've got a 25% discount code for Pro. The annual subscription is uh, $200, and so it's 25% off for a full year. So that does make this cheaper than ChatGPT. So if you're not using all of the plugin features, if Code Interpreter isn't a thing for you, then Perplexity AI might be a really good solution. If you do want to create an application or build your own solution, then Perplexity is not the solution for you today because... There is currently no API access. They've not discussed any plans to do that. So that's a little bit of an unknown. If you're not a fan of Bing, there is a perplexity plugin that lets you have it in a, a side window pane next to search. So there's definitely some things to consider here that uh, might be really valuable for you. So we've had a chance to see all of the capabilities that are available through Anthropic. Definitely a tool that I'm interested in. I'm going to take full advantage of the remaining seven days of the free trial. Who knows? Maybe I'll keep it around for a little longer. Having an opportunity to use these tools and trade between them, they fit in different places. Of course, you trade off supply. But depending on your needs, I could see the use case playing out for this particular tool. Or definitely in early days as well. These tools are going to continue to grow in their capability. I think at some point beyond the feature parity point, we will see a lot of specialization where they are fine-tuning the capabilities and you'll have certain advantages to the various different tools. So we'll keep a close eye on that as we continue to investigate the world of generative AI. Before I close out in today's video, I really want to say a great big thank you to all of you that have subscribed to the channel, and I greatly appreciate you watching. There's a lot that I'd like to do with the channel, but I also want to be sure that I'm providing a maximum value to you, but I also want to have an opportunity to have a dialogue with you, so I'd love to have your thoughts. Something that's interesting to you, let me know in the comments. I want to be able to build a channel and a community that we're all excited about, there's a lot of great things coming. If you see something in the AI space that you don't feel like it's getting answered, I'd love to have an opportunity to dig into that and see if there's a video behind it. I'd love to hear from you about what you're excited about in the generative AI space. And in particular, I'm really seriously considering doing some live discussions on a more frequent basis. There's so much to learn. I think there's a great opportunity for us to work together and do that. One more thing, I would love for you to subscribe to the newsletter. The AI Mistakes newsletter is published on a monthly basis. You'll see a link to that in the comments below. I've got plans for many new things and I'd love to bring you with me. So with that, thanks for watching. Go make some mistakes.